William Coonrod, what? 6 Gary Avenue, Music Falls, New York. How uh, long have you lived here? I've lived there since I've been one year old. So you lived there quite a while, because how I, old are you? I was, I'm 73. 73. I was born in Bridgeport, Connecticut. I see, and you moved into town at? I moved into Hoosick Falls when I was just a little over a year old. I see. In the same house. In the same house. In the All same right. House. Now, tell us a little about your life in Hoosick Falls before you went into the service. Well, growing up, I was one of the mighty alligators. That was a team. We used to have a football team, baseball team, basketball team, and it was a bunch of great guys. And uh, Francis Moody was our coach and everything else, which was Chief Mooney's son. He was the chief of police, Mr. Mooney was. And his son, Francis, was our coach. I see. And we had a great time. And everybody who asked anybody to, from Hoosick Falls, uh, most generally, most of them my age will know who the alligators were. I see. Okay. And then, were, uh, were you in high school and, and the war broke out or what? I was in high school when the war broke out and I was a senior. And I quit because of the superintendent. Oh, yeah. And I left because him, he was blaming me. I was the youngest guy in high school, and anything that went wrong in school, he was, he was blaming you. me. And I just told my mother, I can't take it anymore. I'm and, going into service. So and you enlisted. February 9, 1944, I enlisted in the Navy. I see. And then what happened when you enlisted in the Navy? Where did well, you go? I we went to Samson. Yeah. And from Samson, I, well, I was only there 14 days because there was a, uh, some kind of uh, something influenza or something was going around. And they closed Bainbridge and they closed Great Nut, Great Lakes. I and see. so Sample was the only naval re Samson, you know, was the only right. one. So then they moved us to. I come home for seven days and went back, and they shipped me to Norfolk, Virginia. And a matter of fact, my mother was talking to Mr. Sudan, which I be Sudan was the president of the bank. His son Robert was in the Navy. And they told he told him I was in Norfolk getting ready for a ship. And he looked me up and because he was matter of fact, he, we ended up in the same division. I was on the four fourteen, the Lee Ray Wilson, and I can't tell you the name of his ship, but he was yeah, well, what, what kind of ship was that? That was Wilson. a DE. Destroyer Escort. The I last see. thing they call a ship in the Navy. I see. And then Bob Sudan was the executive officer of the 418. And he was looking for me and I had just been taken under the 414 or maybe. And later on I met Bob Sudan and out in the Pacific. And a matter of fact, our gunnery officer relieved him so he could come back to the States. I see. And what was your duty on the ship? I was a seaman. Seaman. All right, and would tell us a little about what happened. You know, you got on this boat in Norfolk? I get, no, I got on this boat in uh, Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. Uh, Brown Shipyard made it, and then from there we went out to Galveston, and we took a shakedown cruise to Bermuda, came into Boston, and then we went out to come back. I got, well, uh, three, four days leave. And he come back, and that's all the leave I had after I was in the service. And I went back, and we went through the Panama Canal, and up to San Diego. And from San Diego, we went to Hawaii. From Hawaii, we went down to the South Pacific. Got initiated as a shell back, and if you ever want to go through any initiation, that is horrible. Tell they, us they, about it. What? If they think initiations are something when they get initiated, you want to go through that because. It's an honor, but they really beat the living devil right out of you. They made, they, they prepared, the guys were shellbacks, were guys that had already been over. We were polywacks. And they made out of canvas, they made clubs, stuffed them, and s put them over the side of the ship, soaked them, dried them, put them over, soaked them again, dried them. Then they made us crawl through the line, a line, and they, and they beat us in the, what, salt water hoses on us, and then they made us eat, uh... What was this for? To, to the shellback. This is a, the, the, the Royal Ancient Order of the Deep. Oh. 
and you really, really take an awful beating. I'm and this was to get on ship and to welcome you, I mean, to no, break... No, when you went across the equator. Oh, I see. That happened when you went across the when equator. When you go across the equator, you Okay, that's, that's interesting. I didn't know about that. And they really beat you up, and they have they dress themselves all up. They have long wigs on. They have the king, King Neptune, and they have all these guys sitting in chairs. And you got to bow to them. They prod you with electric forks like devils, yeah. you know, and everything else. And I'm telling you, and then they make you sit down in front of the baby, and they got like little hot dogs in a pan, all covered with mustard in a in a you know in a bedpan. Yeah. And then you got to eat this. Yeah. And then they made, then they do it, and then they. And that happened to every seaman polywog, as you said, yeah, yeah. and that guy went across the equator. Even our skipper, even our executive officer, he couldn't wait. He was a Naples graduate, and he he took it with joy. He yeah. he went through it with the rest that, of it. That him. was a Navy tradition, and he wanted that. All know? right. After he got over the equator, what happened? After we got over the equator, <laughs> well, then we went down, and then we went from different islands. You know, with see, we escorted mostly. Uh, well, we might even have escorted Wally Davidonis. I, I don't know. See. We escorted tankers for a while. We escorted transports, CBE carriers. And all through the Pacific. All through the Pacific, going. yes. We were in four, four invasions. And we got hit with a suicide plane in Lingayen Gulf, out of Lingayen in the Philippines. I see. And uh, we lost uh, 12 men were killed. And we were hit right amidships. And the four men that got burnt right up and everything else. They, it was a sad thing to yeah. see those guys. Yeah. And so you were in four invasions. Uh, in other words, you were a, a destroyer escort in yeah. these invasions. In these invasions. And right. what, what invasions were they? I mean, they get a, you know, well, approximately where? There, there was the Lingayen Gulf, which was the Philippines. Yeah. And then, uh, then we were in the Okinawa and a few of the small islands coming up through. You know, and, All right, and then what happened? Well, then after, then after we went back and got our ship repaired and everything else, we thought we were coming back to States after we got hit with a suicide plane, but we didn't. And we were, then we, they took our mask off, put it on another ship and kept us there. And then they got another ship come in and put the mask from that ship onto us. And they, we got hit right in our smokestack, our torpedo tubes, our 20 millimeter guns were all new. And they took their torpedo tubes off and put a, another quad 40 on because torpedo tubes was a suicide thing. You had to turn broadside to shoot them and uh, a lot of our little DEs like us did that and they got blown right out of the water because once they turned sideways they were a, they were a big target you know for them. Uh, Alright so you did these invading, you, you went all at, on the same ship during your whole service. Almost. Yeah. How long were you in the service? I was in the service, I went in February 9th and got out Jane. January 29th of the 1940. Uh, so I was in just ten days short of being ten days short of being in two years. Two years. And I was overseas for 18 months. Out of the two years. Out of the two. <laughs> you years. only had six months state duty, huh? Yeah, that's all. Yeah, you. They they sent it right to you. All right. Then you got out. Then you got out of the service. And when did you get out? Well, we we were the fourth ship into Tokyo Bay. I see. Escorting in there, and then we see we were just off the side when they were signing the treaty on the Missouri. We oh, so you were on, you were in the, in the harbor we where they signed it at that Tokyo. time. Yeah. We I were, see. We were in there at the time, and then we came back, and then we came back to the states, and I got discharged, and I had enough points to get out early because my mother was sick, and my father had had a heart attack, and everything else, and that. I was dependent, so that, that gave me enough points so that I could get out, or I'd probably been in the service another six to eight months. I see. Right. So you came back to Hoosick Falls. So I came back to Hoosick Falls, and I, I drew the great $20, $20, $20, the $20 a week for 20 Yeah, right, I remember right, that. You know? Yeah. And I, I drew about six weeks of that, and then they... Then they put me to work. <laughs> but, I see. But then, I mean, then I went to work for Steve Bradley Paint, and I worked for him for about six months. And then I went to work for Harold Kincaid Plumbing, Kincaid's Plumbing and Heating, and I worked for them for ten years. And then I worked in the specialty for two years. And then after the specialty, had a big layoff, and I went over to Woodflon and put my name in over there. And then I worked in the Woodflon 
and which was now Lydell. Yes. And I retired out of there. I see. And you got married and had kids? I got married and married a girl by the name of Gladys Monsef. And uh, I had two daughters, Debbie and Betty Ann. I know. Yeah. And uh, then I had, of course, I had three sisters and I had a kid brother. And, uh, Do they, are any of them? The only one left alive is one sister out in California. Out in California. Two old sisters and my kid brother has passed away. Passed away. Well, is there anything you want to say about Hoosick Falls or your service before we uh, call it quits? Uh, I think Hoosick Falls is a great place. Uh, I, I'll say this at one time, but I think it's gone down the tubes lately. It's, uh, it, it doesn't seem as though our politicians are, are that, that great anymore. I think, I think they used to look out. They used to have businesses here. Businesses have dropped off, and uh, then you get... The world's kind of changed too with the big malls. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind changed, of made, changed, changed quite a bit. It changed yeah, our society. It, cha it changed, yeah. changed it all. Well, we thank you very much for your time, and we thank you, and I'm turning it off now.